Well, we invited the Lord Advocate and the Justice Secretary to come on this evening, but they both declined. Accepting an invite, though, was Alistair Bonington, who joins us from our Edinburgh studio. And also, we're joined from Edinburgh by the convener of the Justice Committee at Holyrood, MSP Christine Graham. Thank you both very much for coming on the programme this evening. Alistair Bonington, first of all, in this article, you use very strong language. How serious are you being when you accuse the Scottish legal system of being tantamount to the third world system? Well, I start, and I think it's extremely important to major in this because the position of the Lord Advocate uh, constitutionally is unsatisfactory, to say the least. Uh, I am not alone in this. Uh, Jock Thompson, who was an advocate deputy and a very, a very well-known defence lawyer, and it remains that, uh, has said that Scotland is going the way of a banana republic because of the position of the Lord Advocate being merely a government employee as opposed to an independent legal advisor. Ian Hamilton, who is not unknown to the SNP, uh, he is a person who has described the Lord Advocate's position as that of a pimp for the government. And uh, similar remarks in perhaps more measured terms have been made by Professor Robert Black about this. So, I mean, there is a fundamental constitutional problem here with the role of the Lord Advocate. And there is concern, uh, as quite rightly there should be, that even if it is not the case, the Lord Advocate's position is influenced by politicians and his closeness to politicians, that there is clearly a perception that that may well be happening. And the integrity of the whole system is attacked by that kind of constitutional stupidity. And just explain to those who don't follow all the uh, legal references you've just given us, uh, how things are different under Holyrood than they were beforehand. Well, the Lord Advocate, under their previous system, was an independent law officer who was not a member of the Cabinet uh, and was not an employee of the government. That's the, that, that is the major and important difference. I, I may say, just, just to name drop, why not, uh, at a legal conference I attended a little while ago, I spoke to the Lord Advocate's equivalent, the Attorney General of India, and he could not believe the situation that we had in Scotland, which he regarded as positively third world. Christian Graham, the accusation there just on the Lord Advocate alone is essentially MSPs have turned an independent figure into a pimp. Do you well, agree with that? I, first of all, can we separate government from MSPs? I mean, I know that Alistair Bonington's attacked lots of other things, apparently, that uh, MSPs just put through on the nod. Uh, I noticed in his article he attacked double jeopardy, he attacked uh, the fact that there's an attempt to get rid of the need for corroboration, as if we're all going to lie down and let these things happen. Uh, with regard to the Lord Advocates, it's very melodramatic stuff, but it's got Alistair Bonington on the television tonight, uh, is that the Lord Advocate is far more removed than in the previous uh, uh, Scottish Parliament sessions uh, by the SNP government than before. I think there are issues uh, in perception, if not in fact, that would have to be dealt with. The trouble with Alistair Bonington and all his arguments across it is he's firing off dramatically and not really looking coolly at what members of Parliament are actually saying and doing, and in particular uh, the members of the Justice Committee. Alistair Bonington, you're not being fair, is what Christine Graham is saying. Now, just, just to be clear, is your accusation that MSPs aren't up to the job or that the structures of Holyrood aren't up to the job. Which is it? Well, the, you, the structure of the Constitution is what I was talking about when I was talking about the Lord Advocate. Um, frankly, uh, some of the legislation that's come out of Holyrood and your reporter, Reval Alderson, just referred to a particularly stupid piece of legislation. Some of it looks as if it's been written by a child. Uh, it really is absolutely awful. Um, there are parliamentary draftsmen, as I understand it, and I can only assume either real parliamentary draftsmen haven't been willing to come to Holyrood or alternatively MSPs are overruling them because the, the language used here is just quite extraordinarily childish. I'm not saying that is a universal position no. but it happens again and again and again and you also have this idiotic habit of uh, following tabloid agendas, let's make something illegal that started being illegal about 500 years ago so we can get in the front page of the Sun or the Daily Record and say we are doing something about this. You, what, the, you, you deal with crime by having more policemen arresting Which wrongdoers and prosecuting. You don't passing other uh, laws and saying, isn't this awful? 
What difference does that Christine make? Christine Graham, res all? respond to that tabloid allegation, which well, is that MSPs follow the headlines, rush into legislation, don't have a clue what they're doing really, don't have time to scrutinise it, and bad law comes out of that. Well, I'm not, it's not the first time I've said legislate at haste, litigate at leisure. I certainly agree that we should take time over legislation. What do you think that, should have been that, done better? Are there examples can I, can you can say, cite? Now, first of all, deal with the fact that we have additional policemen on the street and that crime is at an all-time low. So let's park that one. Let's look, I think, the legislation that Alistair Bonneting is referring to, which was the offensive behaviour at football matches and communications. Now, I was the first person to come out and say that this should not be emergency legislation. The first person. Because my duty as a backbencher and my duty as chair of a committee is to deal with things in an objective fashion, which is what I do. Other backbenchers do that as well. And what really, you know, got my goat about the article by Alistair Bonington, it was ill-informed about the actions of MSPs, not just myself, but others, in holding the government to account. For example, on double jeopardy, I've already raised with the First Minister and with the Cabinet Secretary in Parliament that I do not want to see this used to give the Crown a second bite at running a case when they didn't run it properly the first time. Now, I don't know whether Alistair Bonington knows that, but certainly other politicians have said that. So there is, there is integrity in MSPs, they're endeavouring to hold the government to account, and it's up to the press to report it. Alistair Bonington, are you essentially suggesting, given what Christine Graham's just said, that you're questioning the integrity of MSPs, whether they're doing their job properly or not. Surely you don't believe they go into Holyrood to make bad laws? No, not at all. I, I don't think it. I'm not saying that there is an intention to create bad laws. But I think what Christine Graham has just said is very revealing. She's said that she's spoken to the First Minister uh, in the hope that a particularly stupid piece of legislation is no. not going to be used in a particular way. The law is there. It's no. on the statute book. It's up to us lawyers to decide what it means and to enforce it. The First Minister has got nothing to do with it at all. I now, know. you've got a retrospective piece of legislation. Retrospective legislation, as Christine Graham and I both know, is something that hardly ever happens in democratic countries. Plus, the terms of this legislation are such that an extraordinarily low threshold is asked for and on the basis of that very low threshold, on the balance of probabilities, uh, the, 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 the person accused who has been acquitted can be tried again. Alistair Bonington, let me uh, just put to you what the Scottish Government say on that double jeopardy mm -hmm. issue. They say it followed a detailed assessment by the Independent Scottish Law Commission. Government consultation on that issue. Safeguards are put in place to ensure new trials only follow very strict requirements. Indeed. This isn't just ministers making this stuff up they do seek wider advice before they legislate. Well, I've just uh, uh, given you a precise uh, example, and this is section two, subsection three. And if you're saying that on the balance of probabilities that somebody, not even the accused, has been found on the balance of probabilities to have committed an offence against the course of justice, which could be, I suppose, as little as lying in court. Now, you'll be surprised to hear that accused persons do lie in court quite a lot. Uh, and on that basis, perhaps they were acquitted. And if that is the threshold for trying a person a second time, we really have gone back to the Stone Age. May, may I come back? Of course because you can, it's, it's very, It's it, very naughty of Alistair Bonneton to translate what I said. What I said was it must not be used when evidence that should have been used in the first trial was either overlooked in, in the examination of a crime scene or not produced by the Crown in the prosecution, where it is, and it's only in very serious of crimes, of course, we're talking about this, but what, what it can happen is if scientific measures at the time were not available, then there is a very, very narrow argument in very special circumstances for, a, for someone who's been acquitted to be tried again. And all I was doing in raising it in the chamber was alerting colleagues and indeed uh, uh, Cabinet and everybody else that I did not wish this to be used by the Crown, and I was given a straight okay. answer. It will not be used in that way. Very, very briefly, we're, we're running out of time. Very briefly, Alistair Bonnet, you've identified a potential problem. Give us the solution. More lawyers at Holyrood? A second chamber? 
Well, I'm a lawyer. A second chamber of lawyers. Well, there's an idea. Yes, I'm a retired <laughs> chair. More work for lawyers. I could volunteer for that. You know, I think, I mean, a, a unicameral system, a one, a one parliamentary system is rare, as we know, in the world. And we are suffering, I think, e e even if I give everybody the, 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 the best of intentions, the best of efforts, we are suffering from the fact that legislation is not perhaps being scrutinised as well as it would be in other systems. And I mean, I am a, a Scot, I am a Scots lawyer, I want to be proud of Scots law, but we just don't okay. compare with what comes out of Westminster. We're, we're, we're running what? out of time. Thank you both very much. I'm sure we'll be back to, uh, to this particular issue. Thank you both very much for joining us. This